the simplicity of the gospel. Welcome to the Simplicity of the Gospel brought to you by the Pegwell Community Church of Christ Church in Barbados. Today we are on the subject where the Lord is reminding us of his soon return and he's telling us, be ye ready. Be ye ready. I'm going to give an extended portion. I'm going to begin at verse 22 because we can learn a lot as we read. And he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought. Take no thought. That is all English. It just means don't worry. Take no thought about what you shall eat, neither for your body, what you should wear. Don't worry about food and clothing. The life is more than food and the body is more than clothes. And he gives us this word. Consider the lilies, consider the ravens. We might say blackbirds or sparrows. For they neither sow nor reap. They don't go to work. They have neither storehouse nor barn. And yet God feeds them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, by taking thought or by worrying, could add one inch to your height? If you're short, you're short. Worrying wouldn't help. Verse 26. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Verse 27. Consider the lilies how they grow. They don't work. They don't make any clothes. And yet I say unto you that Solomon, when he was dressed at his best, didn't even look like one of these lilies. Verse 28. If then God so clothes the grass of the field, which the day is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he not clothe you, O ye of, li of little faith? Verse 29. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. Verse 30. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth what thing you have need of. That you have need of these things. Verse 31. But rather seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. I think in the interest of time, I'm going to have to skip some verses. And jump down to my text. We could always read another part sometime. Be ye therefore ready. For the son of man cometh at an hour that you think not. We don't think too much these days about the coming of the Lord. We think a lot about being happy. We think about education. We think about prosperity. We think about so many things other than the coming of the Lord. And I want to remind you that the, next, the very next thing on the Christian's agenda. Thank you. Thanks. Good. That's great. The very next thing on the Christian's agenda. Is what we call the rapture. Which is the coming of Jesus. Because some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Let me read it. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We are talking about the coming of Jesus. Not in a major now. But he's coming. First Thessalonians chapter 4, begin at verse 13. Pay close attention. This is the next thing on the church's, uh, and the church's agenda, on the Christian's agenda. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are dead, that you sorrow not, even as those that have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which die in Jesus will God bring with him. How is this going to happen? For this we say by the Lord, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord will not precede those who are asleep. And this is how it's going to work. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Yes, he's coming again. With the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ, those who are already dead, will rise up first. And what else? Then we who are alive and remain faithful to God will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the next thing that's going to happen, and it could happen before you get back home. It could happen before this service is over. So Jesus is coming again. And we are supposed to wait 
for the coming of the Lord with patience. We are to watch with anticipation. We are to work with zeal. We are to prepare with urgency. Billy Graham says that scripture says that Christ is coming when you least expect him coming as a thief. He said, be prepared, be ready, prepare to meet your God. Are you prepared? Are you ready? And are you prepared to meet God? The Bible tells us a lot of things that we should do. We must look to the second coming with excitement and hope. The next coming is the second. The next coming of the Lord is the second coming. And we should be looking forward to it with excitement and hope. The Lord is going to keep his promises. And his promises, his promises that he will come again and receive us unto himself. We must be, we must live obediently. We must be praying. We must be looking for his return every day. Our hearts must be so ready. In its sincerity, that we will cry out like the words of the book of Revelation, even so, come Lord Jesus. Now, the coming of the Lord should really excite you. There are lots of things that you have to do. There, don't forget that this race, this journey, is not for the swift, but he that will endure to the end. Amen? Amen? Understand that you could start this journey out and you could lose your salvation. You could be lost. That is why the Lord tells us in so many scriptures that there's so many things to do. Somebody may say to you, you don't have anything to do with being born again. So you don't have anything to do to make yourself lost. That is nonsense because you had nothing to do with your first birth, but you have everything to do with your death. You understand? And also don't forget that the Lord reminds us, and we're going to read this in the book of Jude, that the Lord is reminding us that the angels lost out and they lived in a sterile condition. There was no sin, no devil, no flesh to get them in a mess. Yet they messed up. And the Bible in Jude will tell us that right now they are reserved in the chains of darkness. But not only that, think of Lucifer that we call Satan today. When he was in heaven, he was the chief worship leader and he lost out after having me saved. Let us read these words verbatim because I don't want anybody to fool you that you could get saved today. You could live as you like for the next 10, 15 years. And if you die, you are going to make it to heaven. Not so. The Lord has given us a lot of things that we need to do. And you must not consider these things as works. You're not doing any works. You're, you're doing what the Lord says. Your sanctifying your vessel is a process of sanctification. So you put off sin, like the, word, the, like the Bible tells us in the book of Galatians. Now the works of the flesh are manifest to these. And the Lord said that you must leave those things. You must forsake those things. Because a man that practices those things will not have eternal life. So because of some false doctrine that is floating around, I see why people can marry two and three times. I see nothing wrong with it. I see why people can have a wrong interpretation as to how leadership of church is constituted. Because once the foundation is wrong, you're going to build wrong in the first place. So, the Lord is not appearing only for a spiritually select few. When he comes, he's coming for those who are prepared. Those who are prepared to meet him. And we, we, we're going to get into some scripture I just already gave you um, 1 Thessalonians. But let's look at Luke chapter 21. We didn't apparently find that passage in, in, in Jude. We must get it before we leave here. Where the Lord said that um, take the angels who've left their first estate. And brother, if the angels leave their first estate, you are not better than the angels. You are not more holy than the angels. And if they can lose their estate, if they live in a sterile condition in heaven and they're lost with God, you can lose out as well. And by the way, that's a major doctrine in almost all denominations uh, around the Caribbean. Um, it is kind of uh, it's kind of messed up in, in the American system. But all around you'll find New Testament, best in holiness, name a denomination in Barbados, they know that to be true, that you have to walk with the Lord. You've got to mortify the flesh. 
You've got to put our sin. Did we not find that passage in Jude? We're not looking for it yet. Miss Pastor Chantel is down there. Okay. Okay. Ah, let's go back to verse four. Verse four. You've got to be ready. But we are not doing it because the gospel that we have today is watered down. And we think we're going to make it no matter what happens. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write to you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the teaching which was once delivered unto the saints. That, that teaching is, is messed up these days. This, that teaching is not what it used to be. That teaching is not what the early church had. Today's teaching is different. This is not what you had for the first uh, centuries in the church's life. But the Bible said we got to fight for it. For there are certain men crept in unawares, like John Calvin, um, who were before of all ordained to condemnation. And John Calvin brought in the idea that once to save, you always save. And not only that, he brought in the doctrine which says that God has already predestinated those who are going to be saved. So God, God also has already designed who are going to be saved. And you know that is nonsense because the call to be saved is universal. But that doctrine of predestination wormed its way in. That God has elected you from the beginning to be saved. And you're going to be saved. You cannot be lost. Calvinism. That's not what it ought to be. Look, there were some ungodly men who turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 4. I will therefore put you in remembrance. And that's what I'm doing with you this morning. I'm reminding you. Though you once knew this. How that the Lord having saved. He's using some typology now. Having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. So they save this typology. Afterward he destroyed them that believed not. All of them did not make it because they did not believe. Look at the next verse. And the angels. Some of you here are better than angels. You can't lose your salvation. Not these. The angels was kept not their first estate. But left their own habitation. Huh? He hath reserved unto everlasting chains. Under darkness. Unto the judgment of the great day. That's what happened to somebody. Who was not subject to temptation. Lived in heaven. No devil to tempt them. The flesh wasn't corrupted yet. They had everything perfect. Yet they left the first estate. But look at the next verse. Verse 7. That's the angels. Even typology again. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. And the cities about them in like manner. Giving themselves over to fornication. And going after strange flesh. Are set forth. And for an example. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Some of you are mixed up with the word eternal. This fire that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Is it still burning all it now? Talk to me. Talk to me. Is that fire still going on? No. But yet the Lord called it eternal fire. They have suffered the vengeance of eternal fire. So in order to translate the Bible properly. You've got to get things in context. That fire was out thousands of years ago. Yet the Bible calls it eternal fire what am i trying to do at this point at this point i'm trying to say to you that you've got to be careful with people who will worm their way in among us that's what the bible said i'm not hitting at anybody and bring doctrines that would contaminate your belief so jude said i'm fighting to maintain the teaching that we once had and this is what we have to do so the lord says let me move on from that we'll talk to that uh, uh, another time um in Jude chapter 1 and verse 21, we are talking about being prepared, being ready for the coming of the Lord. So in Jude chapter 1, he's, the Lord says, if you're going to make it into the pearls of glory, keep yourselves in the love of God, which means that you could take yourself out of the love of God. But you've got to keep yourself in the love of God. And while you do that, you're looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourself in the love of God. If you're going to be ready, you've got to avoid persons who will tell you that no man can pluck you out of the hand of Jesus. Everybody knows that, including the devil. God is almighty. If somebody could pluck you out of his hand, that person is mightier than he is. And there is nobody mightier than he is. So nobody 
can pluck you out of the hand of Jesus. If somebody can do that, they'll be mightier than he is. But no, our God is the almighty. It is just like somebody saying, you know, that about the love of God. Nobody could take me away from the love of God. That is true. That is so true. God is love. God loved the whole world. And he loves you. You cannot corrupt the love of God. Even sinners are loved by God. So you've got to be careful to be ready, brethren. You've got to watch your doctrine. You've got to watch your teaching, especially in these end times. And if it comes out of America and American teaching. You don't find many of these doctrines uh, across Africa and places like that. I'm talking about being ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Listen to what else the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, begin at 34 to 36, the 36. You've got to come a little closer to God. You've got to put away a whole lot of stuff. You've got to make sure that you're ready because you can be left behind. That's a good book to, by Tim LaHaye that you should read called Left Behind. Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Take heed to yourself. Suppose you don't. Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, listen to this, so that that day come upon you unawares. He's writing not to unsafe people, but he's writing to save people and he's telling them that if they're not careful, that day can come upon them unawares. And if it does, let's read the next verse. For as a sneer, Shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth? Next verse. What she therefore, suppose you don't. What she therefore and pray always to be ready. You're going to have to watch. You're going to have to pray that you may be accounted worthy. Some people are already accounted worthy without watching and praying. They think. Watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the son of man. How many of, you, how many of you would agree so far that the pastor is reading scripture? How many of you would confess so far that the pastor is not putting his opinion. But he's just reading what the scripture says. Be ye ready in times past. When I was going to church 50 years ago. Meant something not as important as it means today. But with all the. The deceitfulness in, in, in ministry these days, with all the deceitfulness in the church, with all the misinterpretation of scripture, uh, the misappropriation of scripture, you, being ready means a whole lot more. And I like these scriptures that I'm giving you. Listen, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it tells us how it's going to happen. My main point here is that the Lord is coming. He's coming soon. He could come today. He could come right now. You have got to be, be prepared. You got to prepare yourself. I'm further adding to that, that you are saved. I believe in eternal security. I am eternally secure. As long as I walk with the Lord and mortify the flesh and put off this and put off that. Otherwise, I can be lost. The Ephesian church, it happened to them. The Lord said, return to your first love. You have left your first love. Why did he tell them to re return to their first love? In the seven churches, the Lord said to them many times, repent of your sin. Why did the Lord tell them to repent if they were already okay and everything was fine? But the Lord said, no, repent. You're doing some things that are good, but you need to repent. Brethren, be ready. Be ready as far as your doctrine is concerned. Be ready as far as your lifestyle is concerned. Remember that you have to practice a holy lifestyle. I'm going to come. Remember my, ne my next text is Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. I'm coming there next. But look at this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. No wonder Paul said at one time, if any person comes and teaches another gospel other than what I'm teaching you, Paul said, let that person be a curse. Anathema. And he said it twice because it was serious. Paul did not tolerate false doctrine in the church. He always had to deal with it. And he said, here now he's saying to the Corinthian church, and the Corinthian church was the worst church you could think of in the Bible. Everything that was wrong and sinful happened in the Corinthian church. Yet, all the gifts operated in the Corinthian church. Here he's saying, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. The gospel that you receive, not some new gospel. 
by which also you are saved. Listen to this. You are saved. What's the next word uh, after saved? Come on, come on. By which also you are saved. But suppose you don't. It says if. Suppose you don't. You are saved if. Suppose you violate the if. Suppose you ignore the if. It says by, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory which I Paul preached to you. Not John Calvin. Which I Paul preached to you. Unless you have believed in vain. So you can believe in vain. You can believe in vain. Brethren, don't be caught like that when your time comes or when the Lord comes. You don't want to believe in vain. He said that you should believe the gospel that we first preached unto you. If you're understanding me, somebody give me an amen. Look at the next verse. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received. And then he went on, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's not what I want. The first part is what I want you to get. And I'm showing you that you will be saved if you continue. If you continue. If you do not continue, all your goodness will be in vain. In Ezekiel 33, this just popped into my mind. The Lord said, Ezekiel, I'm giving you a message to people to save and unsave. If you hear the word of the Lord that says to unsaved man, unsaved man, you're going to die in your sin. If that unsaved man turns away, and turns to the Lord, Ezekiel, you've delivered yourself. Can we find that? Ezekiel 33, I think. But he said, when I say to the righteous, everybody say righteous. When I say to the righteous that you are going to die. Let's read that from that part. Righteous. I want to get this verbatim. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live. Yes, I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm surely saved. If he trusts in his own righteousness. And commit iniquity. Listen to this. All his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he have committed, he shall die for it. All his righteousness. If he doesn't continue. And he trusts in his own righteousness. And by the way, we're talking to the righteous here. This doesn't have to be interpreted. It's written. When I say to the righteous. Righteous. Righteous man, you're going to surely live. If that man does not continue and mortify the flesh and live for the Lord, but he begins to trust in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness, not unrighteousness, all his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he have committed, he shall die for it. Brethren, you've got to be careful. There's a devil up there like a roaring lion. He's come to steal to kill and to destroy. No wonder Paul said to the same Corinthians, when I came to you, I did not come with excellency of speech because there's so much excellency of speech today, even from the pulpit, that if you're not careful, you could lose your salvation because you're not walking with the Lord. Look at this next text in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. I'm talking about be ye also ready, a sermon which I prepared over a week ago, not last week or yesterday or two days ago. Follow up peace with all men. You got to follow it. You got to continue in peace with all men. For without holiness, you can't just live as you like. You say, I've been saved. I went to the altar at the Pegwell Community Church on the 10th of July, 2021. I'm saved, and that's it. I'm saved, hook, line, and sinker. That's it. No, no, you can't, you can't say that. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. The simplicity of the gospel.